Okay, welcome to this section. And in this lecture, I'm going to talk about using these new improved Lambda for asynchronous WebSockets in composing our IoT dashboard. Now, I got to be honest with you, this isn't the lecture I intended to give. To some degree, I played myself. I came up with some really cool Lambdas that added MQTT messaging to communicate between Lambdas and then check if the payload was a string or a JSON package to set the connection ID or send that as a payload as an event. So it's very clever, and I'll give you a link to this whole repository where I have all the code for this lecture, but I came up with a simpler solution that's going to be better for you guys and not make me look as smart. So I kind of regret not being able to use this MQTT messaging lambdas that I composed that were pretty unique, but I got a pretty unique lambda that's going to do something cooler and it's more functional. So you guys got a break. It's easier to deal with than what I originally composed. And again, you can check out what I originally designed on the GitHub link I'm going to provide with this video. Now, what was the problem with our old lambda if you forgot? We had those two lambdas, one in Node and one in Python. The first problem is obvious. We didn't want to do that hokey manual connection idea where I had to grab it out of CloudWatch and put that unique connection ID, which is a requirement of WebSockets, and stick it into my Python lambda so it can make that API connection. And in all fairness, my first versions of lambdas using MQTT messaging solved that problem. But we also had a second problem that I got to be honest, my lambdas didn't solve with MQTT messaging. And that was when lambdas go cold or they have an invocation period where they're going to stop running after a certain amount of time, then my graph would just simply stop updating with JSON packages. And with the MQTT messaging, I could set that connection ID coming in as a string, and it would set a global variable in that send IoT message Python lambda. But the problem was it would last between two and seven minutes, even if I set the configuration of lambda for longer, and then it would just simply lose connection and die because that lambda would die. So the solution I'm going to give you now solves that problem. And I found the solution digging through Stack Exchange for a non-related problem. So I don't know if this solution's ever been implemented for asynchronous WebSockets. Certainly not for asynchronous WebSockets on IoT. So the secret is using the AWS Systems Manager. That's an AWS service that most of you have never heard of. And that until now, I have never even used. But it's going to be super handy for storing our connection ID between lambdas. So it's a great service, you're gonna see how easy it is to use. So instead of that on-message lambda, getting that connection ID and then using CloudWatch to write it to send message, we're gonna use the AWS system manager as reflected in the slide to save our connection ID from on-message and make it available to send message. So let's go see what that looks like. And to start this off, what I want to do is go ahead and bring up the systems manager. And this is where we'll set it up to store that connection ID. So go ahead and the one we want to use out of all these features, it seems like overwhelming, but it's pretty easy, is this parameter store. Because all we want to do is store a simple connection ID parameter. So go ahead into the AWS systems manager and click on parameter store. Okay, once that starts up, go ahead and create your parameter. Let's get a name for our parameter. Let's call it something that you would not expect, like connection identification. Obviously, that's something you would expect. I was made a poor job of being facetious. So what's the description? You don't have to fill this out, but I'll say, to store our connection ID between lambdas. So normally this is done with SNS to send messages between lambdas. I was being clever by using MQT messaging to send everything through IoT core. And by using that IoT slash pound, you can use pound or hash, we can differentiate between a payload message and a connection ID message. This is going to be an easier solution, even though, again, it doesn't make me look as smart. So what can we save here in our parameter? We can save a string a string list or a secure string, we're simply going to save a string. So I'm going to start with an initial value, but it really doesn't matter what it is because we're going to overwrite it as soon as we get that connection ID coming through. 
So there's our initial value. Go ahead and create that parameter, but remember this name. You're going to have to keep this name. I should have copied it. Copy your name and store it somewhere. So I'll just store it here in my notepad. And go ahead and create that parameter. And there, that's all you need to do. I'll keep this window resident here. And now let's work on revising our lambdas. And as you're going to see, our Python lambda is not going to change very much, but our connection lambda is going to have some pretty significant changes. So go to lambda, and I'm going to start everything from fresh. So I know a lot of you people who watched the previous lecture just want to overwrite your lambdas, but the fact is we have to add some additional permissions. So I figured it would just be easier to do everything from the beginning. And we'll just call them something different so they don't interfere with what we have already. So go ahead and create the two lambdas. The first lambda is going to be this connection lambda. So I'll call this connection improved. Keep this one in node, keep everything the same. And let me paste this in here and show you what it looks like. So I'll go ahead and grab it while that's creating. And here is my connection lambda. Select all, copy, and come back. And it's finally available. I'm going to go ahead and paste it in here, deploy that. And then we're going to create another lambda doing the exact same thing. So I'm going to duplicate this create another Lambda, and as you remember, this one's in Python. This is the one that sends our IoT messages. So I'll go to Functions here, create a function, and send IoT payload to. So we don't confuse that. We'll do this one in Python. And I'm going to show you again why Python is generally a better language for these Lambdas than Node. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to paste my second Lambda that I composed in here with some updates. This one's not going to be updated very much, by the way. And you're going to see why. So just paste that in there. Again, we need our API endpoint, the HTTP endpoint. So go ahead and deploy yours just to save it. And the final thing we're going to do in this lecture is set up our API gateway. And you guys already know how to do that, so it's super easy. Just type in API gateway. And new WebSocket. New WebSocket API build. And we'll call this WebSocket and 1229. I think our other one was 1227. I wasted a day between these writing new functions and realizing that with the AWS Systems Manager, we have a much better alternative. All right, body action. Do we spell everything right? Yep, we got to make sure we spell that right. All right, go ahead and next. Same thing, connect. We have that pre-designed macro we can't change. Add custom route. For this one, I can call this message again. Integration type, you already know how to do this. Lambda, and this is for connect, so it's connect to. Actually, it's connection improved. And second thing, same idea. Lambda, make sure you're in the same region. By default, it is. And it's going to be send IoT payload to, right? There it is, send IoT payload to, next that. Keep it as production, we can name that whatever we want, doesn't matter, review everything, I hope it's correct. We'll hope for the best, and then we'll get our WebSocket endpoint and our WebSocket HTTP internal endpoint. As soon as we go to stages, production, and there they are. We'll keep that open as soon as we'll need it. It's almost the same endpoint, I just have to add HTTPS. So I'm just gonna, Get rid of that because I overcopy HTTPS colon slash slash boom. And that's correct right there. So deploy that. And then that's it for this video. When we get back to the next video, I'm going to explain how both lambdas work considering the update with AWS Systems Manager. I'm going to add in the appropriate permissions. We're going to design a new IoT core action, but it's exactly the same as the last IoT core action we designed. And then finally, I'm going to show you a new way to start sending data and graphing using that bash script without having to compose a static web host on S3. You can still do that if you want, but now you're no longer going to have to do that. I'm going to show you something really cool. All right, let's go on to that lecture.